Parking has transformed in this state from something that we didn't used to have to think too much about to just another colossal hassle caused by the government. And I want to go even bigger picture for a moment. If we're ever going to restore faith in government, if we're ever going to make people understand that we listen and that we know about their everyday stresses and that we want to do something about them, we need to address this issue. So we're announcing today the Parking Bill of Rights, which seeks to ease hassles for motorists at the curb and at the meter. The traffic is uh, already such a big problem in Southern California, but, you know, and parking shouldn't just be yet another hassle that the government causes in people's lives. So here are the components of the Parking Bill of Rights. Uh, it would extend my AB 61, which prohibits cities from parking at meters that the city itself failed to fix. So those are broken meters. It would require cities to notify parking patrols when a street sweeper has passed on a street so that citizens can start using the parking spots on that street again. It would stop valet parkers from taking up a whole street, from prohibiting citizens from parking at the parking spots that the citizens' tax dollars pay for. It would stop cities from hiring bounty hunters. These are third-party firms with a financial incentive to enforce parking laws. It would reduce the ability of cities to fine people whose cars are stolen and dumped on city streets. That's no fault of the, the car owner uh, that, that a car is dumped there. And it would require demand pricing to be fair. Uh, if a city implements demand pricing and charges higher rates for parking at rush hour, it shouldn't be charging those rates at midnight as well. The people who abuse disability placards take a spot away from a disabled person, someone who really needs it. I want to give you some perspective on this. There are 3 million disability placards in circulation in California for 24 million drivers. Now, I'm not that great with math, but when one in eight people has a disability placard, you know that something is wrong. My bill would reduce both the supply and the demand for disability placards. It would reduce the supply by requiring the DMV to actually collect the placards from households when the person who needed the placard has passed away. And it would reduce the demand by allowing cities, authorizing cities, to stop allowing uh, motorists to park at parking meters for unlimited time periods when they have a disability placard, which is a major reason for the demand, of course, for such placards. A city could only do that after they conduct a survey and they certify that they have sufficient parking for the disabled and those who genuinely need those spots. Well, we think you know, part of the problem out there are people who abuse the disability placard system. These people are taking spots away from those who genuinely need them. Another problem are valets who uh, you know, will try to take up an entire block and prevent people from parking at public spots that the taxpayers pay for. And a third problem, of course, is actually local governments. Local governments have started to view parking enforcement as a source of revenue to soak the taxpayer. And we, we're trying to crack down on all three of those practices. I want to thank uh, Assemblymember Gatto for his leadership on this issue. You know, a lot of people think of parking, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just a, you know, not, not a very expensive ticket. But unfortunately, these things can spiral. They can get very, very expensive if it's not paid immediately. The system is very difficult to navigate. And um, if your car gets towed for whatever reason, whether it's your fault or someone else's fault, um, it can get incredibly expensive and actually can lead to the loss of your car, loss of your job, and all sorts of things. So this is a really, really important issue, even though it sort of seems like it's not that big of an issue. But it affects so many people. Um, that uh, we needed to take this on. And again, I want to thank uh, Assemblymember Gatto for his leadership. People need to feel like they are being treated fairly, both at the meter and at the curb, and that their government views them as human beings and not just another source of revenue to fill holes in the budget. I think these bills will go a long way toward that. And local leaders need to know that if they don't do something to address these problems, the state will. Well, you know, I'm a lifelong Angelino and uh, I travel this great state quite a bit. This is a problem in San Francisco, in San Diego, in Los Angeles, um, in the Inland Empire, and uh, in all over this great state. So I think that, you know, the public has spoken. I think the public is very upset with a lot of these laws and practices, and they want to know that their decision makers and state government are doing something about it.